start on 34. This is basically a synthesis problem. They're giving us this starting material and this product, and they're asking what are the reagents that we need to add oh. to synthesize this product, <laughs> this final product from that starting material. <laughs> That's true, right. Okay. But first we have to remove the, off, the alcohol. Mm -hmm. Oh, H2SO4 would protonate. Mm -hmm. uh, and then make the water fall off. Right. And then it would be positively charged. True. And so the H would then fall off to go back to the H2SO4. Would that give you this? Okay, yeah, actually, I think you're thinking about the right reaction. Now, the reaction you're describing, what's the name of the mechanism you just described? E1. Yeah, we haven't actually gone over that reaction, um, but that, that's a good reaction to know. So, you could also do this with an E2, but the answer key has you doing it with an E1. So, you just add H2SO4. Because doesn't H2SO4 always want to get back to its, both of its protons back? Well... So that's probably not the best way to think about it because this is a strong acid. But we can go through the mechanism here. We'll have to finish up with that. This is a strong acid, so it's going to start by protonating somebody. By the way, it's important to know what the structure of sulfuric acid is so you can draw these mechanisms. So we've uh, put a proton on the OH. Is the oxygen a good leading group now? Yes. Yeah. So it can lead. This is just as you were describing. Although we don't have much time, can you just tell us what you would do if you use your I mean, your, the E2? Yeah, we can also go to the E2. So this will be our last one. All right, so when the leading group leaves, we would get this. Now, how are we going to get the last step? Now, first of all, what you might think might happen is you might think you would get the second half of an SN1. You might think that the sulfate would attach here. However, we should just have memorized that sulfate is not a nucleophile. We should just memorize that sulfate is not a nucleophile. So this is not going to give us an SN1. Since sulfate is not a nucleophile, this won't give us SN1. However, we can use the sulfate as a good enough base to do an E1. Now, who is it going to take the hydrogen from? Um, the beta carbon. Remember that in elimination, we always take the hydrogen from the beta carbon. I actually think it would still maybe be more accurate to show the water taking the hydrogen, but it's actually conventional here, I guess, to show the, sul the sulfate taking the hydrogen. And now we're done. So this is an acid-catalyzed E1, I guess, because that gets us back to here. 
Okay, so this would be a good E1 reaction. So this is an important reaction to have in your synthetic toolkit. When can you use this sulfuric acid plus heat? So sulfuric acid, who does the sulfuric acid have to react with for this to work? An alcohol. Because otherwise there wouldn't be anyone to protonate in the first step. So this is only a way of doing E1s with alcohols. Alcohol plus sulfuric acid plus heat. Alcohol plus sulfuric acid plus heat gives you an E1 and an alkene. Of course, this would only work on a secondary or tertiary because you can't do an E1 on a primary. You couldn't form the carbocations. This is only for a secondary or tertiary alcohol. Secondary or tertiary alcohol plus sulfuric acid plus heat. This is a good way of getting E1. Now, previously we saw that E1 is usually not that useful for synthesis because you also get SN1. But we don't have to worry about that here because we've memorized that this is not a nucleophile. So this is the one case where we can get E1 without SN1. If you guys remember the big table in the SN2, SN1, E1, and E2 handout, there was a column for sulfuric acid that said it was not a nucleophile, and that was the only column where you got E1 by itself. On that page three of the SN2 handout, there was a column for sulfuric acid yeah, and heat. I that. Right. This is the first time we've had a chance and to go over that. Bulky, strong. It turns out that the bulk in here is not the key issue. The key oh. issue is simply that this is not a nucleophile. Oh, yeah, I do right. Like the yeah. first column. Yeah, the very first column. The key issue is this is not a nucleophile, so it can do E1, but it wouldn't do SN1. So this is the only column where you get E1 without SN1. So if you want to do an E1 for synthesis, this is very helpful. But it only works on secondary or tertiary alcohols. Okay, uh, so that would be an excellent way to synthesize this.